Oh, AG, yeah. I'm gonna flip it to you, bro. Talk to us about the production. Talk to us about just having that first setup when it comes down to a super producer. That was probably an embodiment of the first era of our super producers on one album. Right, right. That, yeah, just piggybacking off of that, like <clears throat> Illmatic in general set the tone for a lot of different things going forward in the culture with the trends. Um, prior to that and you know everything is just a cycle it comes back around we're seeing that present day people doing one producer you know one artist albums which was the format you know in the late 80s early 90s you know up until Elmatic. but Nas was such a prodigy that all the best of the best wanted to work with him you know what I mean so coming up under Large Pro you know, Large Pro was able to introduce them to the Pete Rocks, the premieres and the Q-tips and get them to want to contribute to the album. Like they was all, you know, happy at the chance to do that because they saw the potential that Nas had and knew that he was going to be the second coming of Rakim, that he was the chosen one. And um, the only person in recent years I noticed, know that said no to being on the album was uh, Eric Sermon. I believe he said in the interview that he could have been on Illmatic and, chose not to with you know whatever else he had going on at the time but you know they all came together for a very a very singular purpose you know to create a classic you know and that's hard to do when it's um a lot of hands on deck you know what i mean to have one singular vision and then to execute that vision and we talk about the competition in hip hop you know with mm -hmm. the battling they was battling each other on the Illmatic album. I remember hearing Premier say he heard, you know, Q-Tips beat for one love. Like, yo, I got to go change my drums up on Represent. Or I got to, you know, switch this up, switch that up. Because they wanted to give Nas all their best. And, you know, going forward, that template of getting the best producers in the game to come together for like one MC, you know, that went forward. And a lot of people tried to adopt that style. It was successful for some people and other people it wasn't. Um, but, you know, like the Blockbuster joint just came out but a little while ago. <laughs> but, I mean, that I format <laughs> but that format overall was created with um, with Illmatic, which also set other trends going forward, like the baby on the album cover. And, um, you know, which was adopted by, like, you know, Lil Wayne did it. And then, um, I mean, it's countless, you know, we could sit here all day and name, you know, uh, artists that did the child picture on the album cover. So it just created a lot of um, a lot of trends in hip hop. And then in real time, I remember the only gripe people ever had about Illmatic was the length of the album, you know, but the producers got in there and they trimmed the fat and said, this is all we're going to come out with a perfect 10 tracks. And then once again, you fast forward to present day, you see more of those concise records. You know what I mean? You had the uh, Kanye run where he did, was doing the seven song albums. And then you're seeing Griselda to put out eight, nine and 10 uh, track albums. So Illmatic was the template for a lot of things moving forward, whether if it was in the early 90s, right when it came out or if it came back full circle. Um, some years later, but you know, it's the standard bearer for a lot of things in hip hop and the production template was uh was one of those. No doubt, no doubt. Very well said, AG.